All right. Let everything kind of come up here. Hopefully everybody's doing good. Just give us a few minutes. People can tune in. Hi to everybody out there. All right, I guess I'm going to get started here. Um, and like I said, we'll try to go through this. I'm going to be talking about um, legal issues today in terms of going off grid, different things that you need to consider before you know, having an off grid uh, homestead or whatever else you need to think about there. And uh, so we'll do this one quick and then we'll um, do a little bit of question and answer at the end and then we'll have another one tomorrow and until we're done with this whole seminar thing so it's a lot of stuff but it's a big issue and it's something I've studied a lot over the years like I've said and so I want to cover some other things here okay so a little introduction there but um, we'll go into off-grid legal issues okay um, first point that you need to consider, you might not be able to be legally off grid in your area. I know I've been contacted by people, especially over in the UK and whatever else, and there's not a whole lot of land whereby you can do an off grid homestead type of thing. And many times it's very expensive and whatever else, but you know, different states here in America, different countries, um, sometimes they frown upon the thing of off grid living. Although I will say this kind of a little thing to think about with all of the environmentalist green agenda type of stuff out there um, that's something that you can actually kind of capitalize on that and say hey you know I'm just trying to lower my carbon footprint here and and uh, have a tiny house and whatever else that can actually help out and um, here in Maine the state of Maine they actually made legislation I think it was 2018 if I'm not mistaken um, but they made legislation whereby you can actually build a tiny home and live in it on a property legally, completely legally. It's, you know, they have a few stipulations that you have to follow. It, you know, it has to be such and such size and, you know, at, at least this and whatever other types of things like that. And you can do it off grid or you can do it connected to the power grid. Um, so that's something to consider. And again, a lot of the old code that's written in, in things in terms of housing. Um, a lot of that system actually came, I think if, if I have it correct, right after, right after World War II, they were in, implementing a lot of that code, national code for housing. The, your countertops have to be so, such and such height and, and you know you study all this different stuff. You know The foundation has to be this and all these things. Some of it's good, some of it's not so good, a little bit too ridiculous. I mean, obviously if you have a, a code that says you know you're not supposed to have your well and your septic tank in the same area or something you know, septic sewage drainage field or whatever well that's a good thing you know you don't want some unscrupulous builder putting in you know your a well and your septic drainage field in the same area that'd be a bad idea or having your septic drainage field going downhill towards a body of water be it a pond or a lake or a creek or whatever else so you would have to check if you're trying to buy land in in whatever area. Um, are there any stipulations about you know having an off grid property? Okay, and if you want to go the whole legal route, you might. It, it's really going to depend on who you run into in your local town office and, and whatever. Again, um, the closer you are to a city, the harder time you're going to have with dealing with somebody. Um, in Maine, it's pretty much just uh, if you're crazy enough to live in it, you know, we'll be crazy enough to give you permission. <laughs> you know, they don't really care. I mean, uh, just talking to the local officials here and they said, you know, you can park whatever you want on your property and and you can just um, there's a homesteading clause that you can do. 
where they'll just, you know, if you have a trailer or whatever else, you know, you can park that there and that's fine as long as you own the property. Um, so um, check with the local laws. But now what if the local laws are really, you know, not so good and whatever else? Well, then are there ways to get around that? Um, and I'm going to let's consider a few things here. Number two, second point I'd like to bring up, bare land with power grid at the road might be a bad idea. Okay, if you're looking for land, in other words, to build an off-grid um, homestead or whatever else, um, sometimes if you find um, that kind of land, it's going to be more expensive. Expensive. I mean, again, you might not even know of any place in the area that doesn't have power lines, you know, near the property. But there are still plenty of places out there in America um, where there's no electricity available at the road, and that drives the price of the land way down. Um, that's the way our land is. There's no power available. So um, very cheap as a result of that. Um, and, you know, if you're going to move to an area, check local laws before you move. That's another thing that's very important. Um, if you're going to go to some place and they really frown very much upon any kind of off-grid homesteading, tiny house movement type of a thing, you might want to check into that. Um, but again, I mean, most of your country areas that are the rural type of land, um, they're not really going to care. They're not going to say a whole lot about that. Um, next, I would say purchase an old, there's a, we're going to get into some of the different options here that you can do. Um, one thing that you can do if the local laws are pretty bad and they're saying, uh, you know, you check and they say, no, we kind of really don't want people that are off grid in the area and, and whatever, which I, it doesn't really make any sense. It's not some kind of a, a dirty, horrible thing to be off grid. It's actually a really good thing. It's, you know, you take care of your land a lot more than, you know, most off gridders take care of their land more than on gridders do, you know, because you're, you know, I can't say it 100% of the time, but most that I know of, they are very concerned with their land and they take really good care of it um, going out and, and thinning the trees properly and taking care of their lane and gardening and all the other stuff. Um, but if you get some kind of a situation where they're saying, uh, no, you can't do this. It's not legal here to be off grid, whatever. I'm going to give you a couple options. And you aren't going to hear very many, very many people talk about this, but here's some options that you can do to get around that corrupt legal system. Um, you can purchase an old house with land, some acreage to it, and park a tiny home on the back part of the lot, the back 40, as they say, and then slowly, quote unquote, fix up the main house. Um, you could just simply say, you know, I can't afford to move into it right now. And so I'm just going to, you know, I, I had to park my tiny home out back there and I'm just fixing the place up. I mean, as, as this country's just falling apart economically, you're probably not even going to have any problems anymore, okay? Um, but the benefits of having an old house on your property, um, there are some really good benefits to that. That you could say, okay, it's an established address, you know, and whatever else. If it's not in too bad a shape, you might even be able to use part of the house and, and things. But what happens when you're looking for land, and I'm going to try to keep this fairly basic because some of you might say, well, I, I know this, but I'm trying to make this for everybody that's, you know, anybody that could come along and watch this to learn something. But what happens when you have a property, the house itself can either be an asset or a liability. If it's an asset, then it's in pretty good shape. It might need a little bit of work, but you can fix it up. It actually keeps the value of the property up. But if it's got some old house on it that, you know, um, the rats, and uh, whatever else are living in the thing, um, that can draw the property down. I actually knew of a cabin in the northern part of Pennsylvania, Tioga, Tioga County, and um, the place was pretty much this cabin. Nobody had gone there for years, and the place was pretty much infested with rattlesnakes. And uh, I mean, my brother-in-law was right next to their cabin, and he said that you'd go over there, and he said the one guy you know, kind of opened the door, was looking in, and he said he literally could hear rattlesnakes rattling, <laughs> you know, and yeah, okay, not not so good. Um, I've seen places where the porcupines up here 
you know, um, they'll get in and they chew through the walls and they go in there and they just use the cabin as an outhouse. I mean, it's, you know, there's pretty bad places. Well, when you look at a property like that, it's basically you're buying the land and now you have this liability of this old cabin that has to be torn down, which drives the price down. This place here that we bought this office in the town of Patton, um, literally our realtor, I've known him for many years now. And he said, you know, he said, I think that the, the old garage that's attached to this place, he said, literally, it's falling away from the house, it's sinking down into the ground. He said, I, he said, it's kind of symbolic. I feel like it's actually pulling the value of the house down. And it is, you know, so that's something that you could look for that can work to your advantage if you're looking not to fix up an old house, but rather to just get the land to park a tiny home on it or to build your off-grid homestead. Maybe find a place that has a really old, rundown, ugly house on it that nobody wants the property because of that, because they're saying it's going to cost us a lot of money to tear the thing down or whatever else, you know. Um, that's something that you could consider, uh, finding an old place like that. Um, another option uh, that you can do, you can purchase an old home in a town nearby town that's not far from where your property's at and uh you can use the, the house in town as an address and for your telephone and internet and whatever else you want um that's is what we do and then that way this is the legal this is what the law sees this is where we live and whatever else if we have a, a ups delivery that needs to happen or any of the other fedex or dhl or whatever it can come here to this address. If we need a telephone, we have it here at this address. If we need an internet, we have it here. Um, and so that's another option. And um, you can do it that way. I actually found out that there was a hunting and, and fishing guide. He's been dead for quite a few years now, but he was a sort of a legendary Northern Maine character. His name was Al Nugent. And his wife's name, I think was Patty. And um, they were back in the Allagash Wilderness area, which is to our west, which is that way. So I'm pointing back behind me. And um, they established a camp out there, and they would take people out in uh, hunting and fishing. He was a guide and uh, just a real big, you know, very strong man from the stories I've heard. Some of the stuff that guy used to do was incredible. And um, they had a house in Millinocket, which is to the south of us here. So... Um, they had their wilderness camp, but then they had their in-town house. Um, so that's a, another thing that you can do. I mean, we've been doing that for many years. We had Bridgewater and our first property we bought was in Littleton, Maine. And then we had our house in Bridgewater and then we bought other land. And then we bought this place here in Patton. Um, so that's another thing that you can do. Um, another option that I would give to people that are, are thinking about how do we, you know, move off grid and yet have an address and legal things there. Another thing that you could do is use a nearby relative's home as your address and you can camp on your land. You just like to camp a lot. That's why you're out there so much. Um, that's another possibility. Um, if you have a relative of some kind that's in a country type of area or a small town, say hey you know could we use your house i again i know of situations like that of you know people that have relatives that live in a little town and then there's you know miles outside of town is where children or relatives or whatever will live at an off-grid location and then they can use the address of their parents place or their uncle or aunt or whatever that's another possibility you know that you can have that as your official address so there's no confusion there and whatever else um to avoid the thing of a really restrictive zoning policy depending on where you move to um again like i said a lot of places very country backwoods areas they're glad to have you there uh paying taxes they aren't going to care you know you want to live on the land you want to live in a little shack or something okay that's fine and you just simply say, hey, I, I need to have build this little shack and and uh, or this little put this RV on the property or whatever else. We'll talk about that in another part seminar here. 
uh, part of the seminar, say it that way. Um, you can do that and, and they don't care. But if it's really restrictive, really kind of nutty, well, then you can go and have your address at a relative, uh, relative's home. Next point, um, and I kind of already referred to this a little bit, but uh, quote unquote homes with wheels underneath are not considered fixed structures. So they can't say, oh, you're living out there on that land. You're, you're, you've built a place out there. We need to talk to you about the taxes or whatever. Hey, it's just a temporary dwelling place. It's just a temporary thing. It's got wheels underneath it. I can move it. You can't, uh, you can't come and say, I need to park my vehicle a certain place or else we have to charge you and call it a parking lot or something. You know, no. I mean, you can. So if you have something with wheels underneath. Okay, and again, we'll talk about that when we get into recycled housing. Um, we've tried a lot of different things in that area. And so just as experimental, let's see if this works, see what happens and, and whatever else. And it works reasonably well. Um, so that's another thing to think about. You know, as you, you know, you want to move and put something on land and you have an old school bus or an old uh, reefer trailer, an old ambulance, an old whatever, and you park that thing on there, you can always move it. And so if you have, again, if you have some real jerk that's there and, and trying to make it hard for you to live on your land, well, I have wheels underneath it. Okay. Um, don't fall for the thing if you're saved. Don't fall for the thing that you just have to get along with every government official and whatever else. Um, there's some real servants of the devil out there. Um, some. Uh, a lot of times you'll meet people that are actually very kind and, and very nice in the town governments and, and whatever, and they'll have no problem with what you're trying to do. And again, they shouldn't have a problem as time goes by because we're all supposed to be living with this 2030, Agenda 2030 type of, you know, reduce your carbon footprint and all that other stuff. And so you just, you know, use that situation to say, well, that's what I'm trying to do, like I said earlier. Um, another thing. Another thing that's very important here that I want to say about the legal issues, um, be a good tax paying citizen and neighbor. Okay. Um, there's a reason I've, I've heard this thing over the years and they say, well, you're not really free because you have to pay property tax and therefore property tax is uh, proof that it's the government owns your property or something like this. Um, no, that doesn't work. Property tax is charged so that they can repair the roads and they can, you know, have a public school in the area and they can keep services going. That's the point of property tax when you live in a rural area. Okay. They aren't just pocketing the money or something and, you know, whatever. There's no problem with property tax. Make sure that you pay property tax, right? Do not just come to an area and then, and then, uh, you know, don't pay your, your taxes and things like that. That's bad. And don't be a jerk about it either. Don't, I mean, you can keep to yourself. Most people do in country areas, um, but you can be friendly and, and things. It's, there's no problem with that. Um, but, you know, just don't talk too much. Okay, that's another uh, one we'll be getting to here in just a minute or two. But um, paying your taxes. And on that note, uh, you can also look for places that actually have come up for um, tax acquired sale. Um, we've seen that somewhat in this area here and you can get those for really cheap sometimes. Um, there's a lot of times that you can just, you can find something literally for a few thousand dollars, a property, you know, that's cheap. So, um, uh, next we have one other point, another point I'd like to make. Um, I've actually heard this done too. And that is if they are really sticklers about, no, you have to be code approved in order to live on that land out there. You have to have a code approved structure. Then you say, okay, what is the minimum that I can build and be approved and code approved and all the, all that other stuff. And then you build that thing according to their standards and, and whatever you build that. And then you say, okay, are you happy? Are you satisfied? Okay. There's the code approved house. It's on, if there's on grid power coming to it, whatever, there you go. And then build what you want back in. Um, no driveways going back to it or whatever else. Just footpaths going back in. It's You can really build some neat things, you know, 
portable chainsaw mills and, and a lot of other things that you can go really far back in there where you can't drive a vehicle to in terms of a car or a truck or whatever else. Um, that's another thing that you can do. And again, I, like I've said, I've actually seen people that have done that, that they build the, okay, there, that's what the town wants. That's what they require. There you go. It's built there. We can either rent it out or we can you know, have it as a guest house or something. It's not what we technically want, but build something that satisfies the local town and then build something small back in the woods. I mean, obviously if you say, well, I'm going to build a, you know, 500 square foot house out, you know, that's code approved out along the road. And then I'm going to build a 3000 square foot house back in or something. You're not going to get away with that. We're talking again, small home living type of stuff here. You know, if you want a really big place, then look for an older house that needs work and fix that up. And you can actually do a lot of tiny home type of things within that um, house, which might seem kind of, huh, you know, you could have a tiny home, uh, experience inside of a big house. Yeah, it's what the old timers did. Okay, again, understand that. Old timers didn't heat the whole house. Okay, I mean, my grandfather, um, Bernard Fry was his name, and he would talk about how that they slept upstairs in this big old farmhouse when he was a boy, and I forget how many children they had in that family, but uh, they slept upstairs and they had chamber pots where they would actually, you know, it was just a sort of like a, an old bowl essentially and they would go to the bathroom in that and then they'd slide it underneath the bed that's the way they did it old time things you know you don't have to run out to the outhouse that way but they'd go to the bathroom in that chamber pot and he said they'd wake up in the morning and it'd be frozen solid so uh, a little cold um, my wife's childhood home uh, out in Iowa there was no heat upstairs no radiators going upstairs you know it was all the old radiators, hot water heat, and um, there was there weren't any upstairs. So she said that, you know, it was just a normal thing that you'd get, you know, dress up nice and warm, have plenty of blankets, and you sleep really good that way. Uh, that's another one of the old time skills that you will, you know, you'll see that um, of sleeping in a cold environment. We like to sleep in a cold environment. I can't sleep, you know, quite as cold as we used to. Because of our dog now, he needs to have things a little bit warmer. But uh, so you can get an old house that might be big if you don't really want the whole tiny house thing, and still implement some of the the intelligence of the older people. You heat your kitchen and your bathroom downstairs, and that's basically it. You need to get warm. Well, that's where you go. Um, so, but another option if you wanted to build a code approved house and then something back in the woods that's a lot better and more sustainable um and finally loose lips sink off-grid homesteads okay um small town gossip especially if you're from the city and you're thinking i might go off grid or try it or whatever else um small towns there's not a lot going on with most of the people and so they like to talk and that's good and bad it's good because it's a very friendly atmosphere and you get along with people and whatever, but it's bad because then everybody knows what you're doing if you talk too much. So again, you know, if you're standoffish, most people are standoffish in country areas, no matter where I've gone, they're not really quick to just blah, 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 everything. I mean, down in West Virginia, um, I have relatives that live down there and down there, they're very talkative, but it's because they're pumping you for information. <laughs> And uh, very, very nice people. There's a lot of nice people down there. Um, but you know what I'm saying? If you're from the South, uh, there's definitely a lot of gossip down there. Um, and up North, it's a lot more um, polite and things, but it's still, there's still gossip up here. It's just not quite as, as much of it um, as it is down South from my experience. Um, so, that pretty much covers the thing of the legal issues. Um, if anybody has any other questions or any points that they think, you know, that I didn't cover on that um, in terms of different ways to do things. Um, I mean, it, hopefully you can go along with the laws in your area and everything's fine and they won't care. And, oh, yeah, if you want to build something, go ahead. Um, that's the best way to go. But if you start asking and it's no, I don't think we could give permission. 
Well, then there's other options. Like I said, um, what we've done for many years, um, just because of our ministry, you know, I don't want to have a lot of try to make video offline, you know, at the off grid property and whatever. It's just easier for us to have an office in town. And then that's the address. That's the phone where our telephone's at and whatever else. And we can do what we want out on our property. And, um, you know, it's, you can take a break essentially and go out onto the land and just, uh, you know, there's not going to be any phone ringing and whatever else. And there's pros and cons to it. Um, that's just the way it is with off grid living. I mean, if you want everything provided for you, then, you know, off grid living is not really the way to go. Um, because it is tough. So, um, Tomorrow, we're going to talk about um, buying land. Again, some experiences that I've had with that. Um, so, but if you, anybody has any questions, we can go through some questions now, questions and answers. Um, is it true that you are only taxed on land property and not a mobile as well as long as it it's on wheels and not on a slab foundation. Yeah, it is. Um, you know, and you know, we are actually are our, our uh, current tiny home situation. It's on wheels and I'm not even going to be keeping it um, when we eventually are able to build and things depending on what we build, how we build. That's still a big uh, matter of debate because we're getting into this really weird market thing where housing prices are about. I mean, we there was a super bubble basically that that really inflated the price of housing. Um, and so uh, the Blackwater investment uh, firm basically came in and was buying up a lot of properties down south. That's why the prices went up. And Zillow also did some, they were buying houses and then were putting them back out there for really inflated prices. And uh, it's just so much scheming in the financial sector, right? just crazy. But what's going to happen is the mortgage rates right now are being, are going up. Federal Reserve is raising the mortgage rates from what I'm learning and, um, you know, which is going to make people say, hey, I can't afford a mortgage right now. Um, all of the problems that were caused by the pandemic in terms of people's incomes and salaries, their incomes are going down. People are more in debt. People are financially just ruined. So you have this huge, you know, there's a whole lot of houses out there. Supplies really going up. In terms of people having to sell their houses and the demand is going to go down again fuel oil which i mentioned yesterday um as fuel oil the cost of that goes up it's going to make a lot of houses i mean there are houses up here that that's their only source of heat is uh, fuel oil well if it goes up to some crazy amount it's costing you ten or twelve thousand dollars for a winter or something to heat your home well that's too much money for people so there's a lot of different things coming up with that uh the cost of lumber um, again, there are tariffs that have been put on uh, Canada and things in terms of shipping lumber over, and that's causing price fluctuations. And you know, I try to keep an eye on this market stuff because I'm, I'm you know, we're looking at, you know, either building on our property or maybe purchasing a, a house or something near our property, like an adjoining property or something. Or I don't know. It's just a an issue of prayer right now is what we're doing. Um, but yeah, as long as you have wheels underneath, they're not going to be able to tax you for it. They can't. Do you ship your hard drive videos to the UK? If so, have you heard of any problems? Import taxes, blanked hard drive from security scans, etc. Is shipping included? Um, it's it's all right there on the website, KingJamesVideoMinistries.com. You can uh, get one. If there's any problems, you know, the, it, in other words, it'll say this is how much it is, and then this is the shipping. It's, you know, it's in with the price. It's figured out and in with the price. Um, if you would get one and you would get it and it doesn't work for some odd reason, well, then we send you another one. Uh, that's our loss. We send another one. We actually had to do that. So, but we test them and make sure everything's fine. So there shouldn't be any problems as far as scanning type of stuff. So, and hi to everybody that's tuning in. Nice to see everybody.
Um, hello, everyone, and Mr. Denlinger. I would like to know how did you get started in foraging for fresh vegetables instead of the grocery stores? Do you plan on having a garden on your property? Um, we don't really forage much in terms for uh, fresh vegetables. It's more fruit that we would forage for. And as far as my start into that, that was when I was a boy. Um, I've always been into, um, you know, raspberries and cherries and, and mulberries and, you know, and then that's Pennsylvania. And then you come up here and it's a whole lot of other types of berries and things. So I'm, I'm very familiar with foraging um, for wild edibles. And I like to learn about new ones and try new ones and, and um, see if there's any health benefits to them and, and whatever else. Uh, so, um, but as far as vegetables are concerned, there's not a whole lot in the way of vegetables, wild vegetables to harvest. Um, dandelion greens would be a sort of a green salad, green type of thing, thing there. So, um, there are some kind of, uh, you know, uh, wild potatoes and things. And there's, we actually have uh, wild chives on our property. So that's another one. But wild potatoes, I've heard of those, but never tried to find them or anything. But um, it's been a lifelong thing for me. Answer your question. Question Did you hear about priests that did baptisms wrong and are now null and void? No, I didn't hear that. Oops. Um, Question, what do you think of climate change, specifically Grand Solar Minimum and Mini Ice Age? Um, they are using the thing of climate change and, and all this other stuff. There's an agenda behind it and it's control. And, you know, um, I would like to just simply say that there's not anything that's going to happen. We'll all get to live in whatever homes we want and just have freedom. And there'll be plenty of food in the grocery stores. But quite frankly, I don't think that that's the case. And, you know, right now, a lot of people are not ready for the lifestyle that we live, a lot of the off grid type of thing. Um, but it'll come to a point where it's going to be if, if you want to be free, you're going to have to consider being off grid and having your own food supply and whatever. Um, it's food is going to be used as a weapon in the future. Uh, you can mark my words on that. That is a prophecy i will pray or i will uh, promise you that okay food will definitely be a weapon it's famines is one of the things that's listed um for the end times so yeah um i don't believe in an actual climate change i believe that it's just a it's real because they're going to use it as the method to take people off their property and limit how much food you can have and gas you can have and whatever else so you better start getting ready for simplifying your life is the whole thing. Put this one up here. My grandma would go get wild berries between the highways and make jam. Yeah. Yeah. Or, you know, I learned a lot of it from my grandfather and grandparents, that generation. They knew they understood that went through the great depression and, and, you know, I'm not sure what age she was, but a lot of our grandparents, they knew a lot about it. And by the way, um, wild edibles are the highest level of nutrition that there is on earth. Um, there's nothing better than them. Um, all the organic, whatever type of stuff doesn't even compare to wild edibles. So does anybody else have any other questions? Any things that I did not cover today in the study here um, in this live stream uh, in terms of questions about um, local laws or whatever else. Um, yeah, there's th some of the future seminar things I'm going to be doing will tie in with this one, but I'm just kind of trying to cover the basics here in the first couple parts of this seminar. Um, you know, yesterday, what is what does it mean to be off grid? today what about off-grid legal issues so
But uh, does anybody else have any other um, thoughts or questions or whatever else? Question, what if one day property taxes get so expensive because of hyperinflation? That's a good question. Um, uh, I don't know if they can do that, quite frankly, because they have to basically, I think that there has to be um, a number of years where the prices go up and then they have to reassess property values. So they can't just arbitrarily say, hey, we're raising your taxes to you know, quadrupling them or something like that. Um, and you can fight some of that stuff too. I know my my uh, my dad down in Pennsylvania. He fought the thing of them raising his property tax. And then eventually they just got their way after a couple of years. But um, again, if you keep things small, uh, they aren't going to be able to tax you all that much. Another reason to do that. What kind of basic wood stove is needed for a small home or tent? Uh, that's a very complicated subject <laughs> um there are wall tents that you can get and there's actually a little small uh camp stoves that you can get for pretty cheap uh four dog stoves they make some really good ones and uh, we have one and we've used it over the years and it's it's a good stove um but it depends on what your building's like it depends on you know how much insulation you have whatever <laughs> There's a lot of different things to that. I will be talking about that in the future. One of the ones coming up. Will you be going over hot water or how water and septic works in the winter time for mobile homes? Or you have to prepare ahead of time. Um, I might be covering some of that. I'm trying to think of if I, I don't think I have that written down, but I think I, you know, I'll probably cover some of that. What state is most friendly towards off-grid living? Hmm. Um, that's a good question. I don't really know if I can answer that one uh, because I don't know all the different states. Um, hmm. I know out west there, there's a lot of off-grid places. Um, when I was in Montana, they were it was just a normal thing out there. People didn't have electricity. They lived off-grid. Um, there's a bunch of them here in Maine. Um, again, I think the closer you get to bigger cities, the more trouble you're going to have with the off-grid thing. Do you think that all property will be taken back as part of the Great Reset? Well, they will certainly try. I believe that. But I think what they'll do first and foremost is they'll probably just simply... Um, They'll say, uh, you know, that they'll just cut off, you know, uh, resources and whatever else and make it very hard to live in certain areas. And it'll be, oh, you have to get towards, a, you know, your nearest smart city. And um, I do think that there's going to be a lot of people dying off in the next few years. And then they'll just kind of centralize power to the smart cities. And I've even heard um, John McAfee, the McAfee software guy. And he said, you know, that the future is all this technology stuff. And he said, other than that, it's going to be you'll just be living in a cave in animal skins, you know, <laughs> like this and uh, whatever. And uh, it'll be just this miserable existence. Well, um, so at first, I think that it will be, you know, the pressure will definitely be there to move towards smart cities in the future. The great reset thing you'll own nothing and be happy because people will lose everything and so they'll have to move to the smart city is kind of their debtor prison if you will and um people that live out in the countryside it's going to be very rough you know and again i don't know that's i can't really teach you either way in terms of what's the exact timing of that in the bible i don't know um something i've thought about um i will say one thing in terms of the scriptures what the Bible talks about, and that is that there is the thing in Revelation about how the Antichrist goes out to make war with the saints and to overcome them. You know, power is given him to make war and to overcome them. 
And it's almost sort of, I imagine in my mind, kind of a scenario where he goes out and wages war on Islam, which is, is what I believe, that he's going to be a Catholic pope, goes out, wages war on Islam, and you know, kind of builds up his army as a result. And after that, they've had their victory. And then they go out after the saints that are out in the wilderness, is what I think. Are homeschool laws a concern when looking for a location to live? Well, that depends on if you're uh, married by the state. If you're married by the state, then you have to abide by their laws in terms of raising your children because that's part of the whole state marriage license thing. Um, if you're not married by the state, you don't have to care about anything homeschool law-wise. Uh, we don't. And so I don't report to anybody, and, and we don't have any problems at all on the whole thing. Um, the question is off grid the only or best solution for the body of Christ going forward. Um, no, anything is a is an option when you're a member of the body of Christ. God can protect you, um, certainly. Um, but I think it's one of the best ones. What do you think about bugging out? Well, you come here in the spring. There's definitely a lot of bugs out. So I know that's not what you meant. Um, bugging out, you know, where are you bugging out to? You get into the thing of the bushcraft survival, primitive survival. It's not a long-term solution. Um, I'm not legally allowed to own a firearm. Firearm, would I be in disobedience to God if I purchased one? Well, I don't know how you would do that um, if you can't legally have one. Um, What should you do if it's difficult to get a job and you don't know what to do? Um, well, pray about it and say, okay, Lord, I'd like to be able to you know, show me what to do. And um, I mean, there are people that I've heard of that literally get a backpack and they go someplace and, you know, they'll get a job and whatever else. And they'll camp out someplace, not in the winter, but in the summer months. And you just start to, um, you know, build up your wealth that way then you can afford to buy a little bit of land and then you can build on that land and you can you know there's ways to to think your way through it um can christians work within the system to correct the system no um no the system is run by freemasons and all kinds of other things like that and they're no <laughs> Um, that time is gone. Okay, there was a time when Christians were in, in political positions and and had influence and whatever else, but I don't believe in that anymore. Um, um, do you think they'll start hokey pokeying wild animals, and when they reproduce, they'll contain the things in them, and we'll have to watch out what we catch for food? There's no possible way that they can do that with wild animals. I mean, you're not going to get close enough to any of them, you know, to, you know, no way. <laughs> That's a, it's propaganda. I mean, the, the levels of propaganda and disinformation, misinformation, everything right now, it's just off the charts. No. I mean, just if you want to experiment with that, try to catch a squirrel sometime, you know, or a, a deer or something like that. It's not going to happen. I'm sure that they would like people to think that, but no, I don't believe that, that will happen. Do you think investing in gold and silver is a waste of money? Well, define money. <laughs> gold and silver is money. Um, I, I, I understand what you're saying. I'm being a little sarcastic here, but um, gold and silver can be manipulated. But then fiat currency, paper money, it's, it is manipulated. It's printed. It's not real. So the question is, um, why are you investing in the gold and silver? Is it to make money? That's iffy. 
Um, I mean, you can make money if you sell the right time and all that other stuff. But if you're thinking, you know, to be able to actually really make a huge amount of money in the future when you can sell it and gold goes at 5,000 an ounce or something crazy, that's very questionable. I did a study on the whole thing of the future of finances over at Rumble. Question, ever look into trust law and reclaiming legal sovereignty as a workaround for a lot of taxes, admiralty law, contract law, secured creditor, etc. I have heard of a lot of that stuff, um, and it's, it's problematic because you start getting into that stuff, and then you get into um, having to go to court and, and you just having to learn all these little things. And you're, you're dealing with, you know, I'm here with constitutional law and common law and, and all these things that are right and good and then you're dealing with corrupt lawyers and politics or lawyers and uh, judges you know and it's that's the problem with it um so okay Is the divided kingdom of iron mixed with clay referring to man merging with technology? Do you think people would, will embrace biotech to prevent their bodies from falling apart due to the poke? Quite possibly. Yeah, and in terms of the last question there. But yeah, I do believe it's iron mixed with miry clay is a thing of um, partly that of the, what do they call it, um, transhumanism or whatever. Yeah, I think it is. Um, our license is to carry a firearm against scripture. You could debate that. That's debatable. I don't know. Um, I'll go with this one here. Do you use oil lamps? What do you think about them? Dangerous, safe? No, we do not use oil lamps, but I'll be covering that in a future uh, seminar thing on um, uh, on the thing of lighting. What do we do for lighting at our off-grid property? So, um, okay, is the Sermon on the Mount for Millennial Kingdom? Yes, yes, it is. Okay. Um, question. Do you think you could be wrong about the Trinity doctrine? Didn't the early church believe in the Trinity? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Um, the Bible is the authority, not the early church. And what is the early church? Um, the writings and things of a lot of the early Christians were destroyed. Um, the Catholic Church comes out, they destroy all the writings of the early Christians, and then they say, well, look, we're the early Christians. <laughs> uh, no. If it's not in the scriptures, then I don't believe it. And it's a it's a totally illogical, nonsense teaching, the Trinity. Uh, we have three different titles for God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. But there's not three gods. You say, well, then they're all the same. No, they're not all the same. They're all different. The Trinity is idiocy. Will you be making a book against the post-tribulation rapture? Eventually, yes, I would like to. Um, it's another one that's on my list, things to write. So. But anyhow, um, does anybody else have anything else to say there? And, you know, I want to report to... Or, reply to something I saw there, the thing about John McAfee. 
Um, I'm not promoting the man at all. You know, okay, just want to make that clear. <laughs> I don't promote Donald Trump. I don't promote John McAfee. They're perverts and wicked and whatever else. I'm just simply saying that these guys are, you know, coming out and saying, oh, you know, we're going to, if you don't go along with technology, you're just going to be some, like, living like you're out in the 1800s or something out in the middle of nowhere, which I think would be great. So, okay, well, I don't think if there's any more uh, questions here, so I'm going to get going. Like I said, I'm going to try to keep most of these under an hour. Um, and so, just again, to kind of recap what we were talking about here, uh, most places, I think, going forward, especially for the economy going the way it's going, um, are probably not going to have a problem with people living off grid. And but a lot of it, you know, there's a I used to be in ministry with a, a Marine. He was a uh, had left him. He was a veteran from the Marine Corps. He was a sergeant in the Marine Corps. And he said he, would, he was taught in the Marine Corps um, a saying, and that is it's easier to ask forgiveness than it is to ask permission. So keep that in mind, you know, um, if you can find some land someplace that you can build something, put something on it, have wheels underneath it and, and just, oh, I'm just, you know, camping and whatever here we are. You're not lying. You're saying I'm camping. You know, it's, that's why you moved out there. Um, don't be uh, a bad person and whatever else. Be kind to the neighbors and, and pay your taxes, property taxes. Uh, and, you know, don't have things all sloppy and looking terrible and whatever else out there out there at your property um if you buy an older house um build what you want out in the back part of the property and the house is out there and that's your address and whatever or you can buy a place in town a small place or whatever um i would not rent a place if you're living off grid because you're just throwing money away at that point in time um again you know if you or from the city, you're probably thinking, yeah, right, you know, buy a place in the city and a place in the country. How would that work? Well, get to a smaller town where places are a lot cheaper, you know. So, and of course, you know, think about the thing of, you know, alternative ways to make money and things like that as well. And, you know, money saved is money earned is another thing I'd like to say about the off grid lifestyle. There's a lot of things that you can do living off grid. And save huge amounts of money, so your cost of living goes way down. Um, that's another reason why it's a lot cheaper to live in a country area than it is in the city. Um, so, all things to think about, all things to pray about. Um, and if you're in a situation right now, by the way, and you're saying, "Okay, this is all overwhelming, and how would I ever be able to do this?" Pray about it if you're saved, and just say, "Okay, Lord, this is what I believe I should be doing. This, I'd like to raise my." children in the future. I'd like to be able to have a wife in the future and raise our children in an off-grid type of such situation. Um, I don't want to be falling for the whole um, high-tech on-grid world and, and whatever else. Lord, please show me what to do. Um, and he'll teach you a lot more than I will. So, um, okay. So, okay, I'll answer this one here, just looking at this. Um, my family has had more trouble finding land this year than any other. We are looking for a small plot. We have money, but not investing in an overpriced lot. Any suggestions? Um, unfortunately, the suggestion I have right now for you is to wait. Um, I'm in a similar situation where we're looking thinking about what to buy, you know, whatever else. Um, not really the best time to build right now on our property because of the price of lumber, but that can come down. I know it is a little bit. And so um, things with the economy are going to start going south in a quick way. Uh, people were buying houses during the pandemic when they didn't have much money. And a lot of these people are now out of work. The unemployment numbers are frightening. I mean, it's 
the the sales of cheaper land will be coming in the future and so if you have money hang on to it pray like crazy say lord please judge these the wicked people in this country um and help the prices of housing to come down and uh, or land in your case and um that's what i would suggest about that so uh, that is going to be it and we will see you tomorrow in the next one we will be talking like i said about buying land tomorrow so be a good one for you to tune into um so that will be it see everybody tomorrow